Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinone saying you reach Iron Ministries. Iron Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And actually, um, this is the same Angelo Quinone that had the debate with uh, Tony from Florida. And Tony, if you're out there, I hope you're doing all right. I haven't spoken to you in a while. I'm actually in the Philippines with my wife and my baby. Say hi, hon. Hello. So they could believe me, <laughs> you know, that you're my wife. Hello, Her name is Riza Tepayat Now Quinones and Anna Devane is is here. Um, what's she doing? Sucking her thumb, honey? Or she's what is she doing? You giving her milk? Like that? Oh, okay. She's doing better than that. <laughs> so her name is Anna Devane. Uh, I got the the name from General Hospital. I used to watch General Hospital. I still like it, you know. And one of the secret agents there was uh, Anna Devane. So I got that name from there i just wanted to give a, a small commentary and uh, because i was just checking out some stuff for christmas you know um some some christmas carols nap king cole and and somebody else i forgot the, the the name and then i was looking at some of my mother's videos she she passed away she went to be with the lord in 2012 and um i was just checking some stuff out you know from my old channel angelo kiki quinones and I have uh, additional channels, uh, Angelo, I believe is, you can go to Angelo Rucci, that's R-U-C-C-I, and you can see a hundred videos on Greek constructions, you know, of, you know, Bible verses that come into play when you're dealing with Jehovah's so-called witnesses, so-called Jehovah's witnesses. And then I have another channel that I'm doing some Bible stuff and some stuff here from the Philippines, uh, Angelo Kiki, that's K-Y-K-Y. And Riza Quinones, okay, R I Z A, and so you can check that out. But I just want to um, chime in on uh, Hebrews 1 8, and I'll tell you, in the old days, I really didn't have a great command of the Greek like I like I like I do now. Praise God, you know. And that comes with um, debating different kinds of Jehovah's Witnesses throughout the years. You become better. Praise God. Um, you just become better as you keep on debating the issues, you know, and then as you continue to get stronger in the Greek, you can actually impart the different structures and things like that to people. And so I'm, I'm better equipped nowadays to, to actually look at the, the Greek New Testament and, and just really impart it to you guys, you know. So I just want to really um, check out um, Hebrews 1.8. And really concentrate on the first five words. Um, and it says something like this. It says, Hatranas, hey, you could say otronos, but Hatranas su, Hateas. You know, your throne, O oh God. I just wanted to, to add that a lot of people don't understand. There are two different ways in Biblical Greek of saying O. Oh. Like if I say O oh, Riza, I will use a symbol that's very stark, that's very clear. You can easily detect that O. And it's, an, it's actually an inflectional particle. It's a, it's, a, it's a special symbol for that sort of um, uh, direct address with special force. If I say, O Riza, I love you, I will use the inflectional particle, okay, to show, out, to show special force. It's just like Jesus did and Paul did. And Luke did actually. I think Luke, in the beginning of the gospel, uh, uh, you know, by his name, actually says, O Theophilus. Okay, that's an inflectional particle right there. It's an omega with uh, a salt breathing um, mark on top and a uh, circumflex, you know. And so and that means O, like O, you know, but with special force. Paul uses it. Uh, you know, he uses it when he was, when he was addressing Timothy in First uh, Timothy chapter six verse twenty, and Jesus uses it when he says, "O oh, woman, great is the faith of yours." You know, um, and she had great faith, and he said, "O oh, woman, great is your faith." You know, so the faith, as a matter of fact, definite article, the faith. Okay, and so. Um, he uses the inflectional particle. That's a, so that's a very easy O to look at in Greek and to translate into English or whatever the case may be. The one in Hebrews 1.8 is not like that. Okay, it's, it's, it's not a special symbol there. 
Okay, you have to look at the context. You have to see if that's a quotation, which it is. You know, that helps a lot. The context. Um, and just because it's hot the ass, it doesn't mean that hot the ass is acting like the subject of the sentence that God is something. Okay, it's not that God is something there. Okay, is that the throne is something, and in between the words, he's saying, "Okay, um, your throne, O God, is forever and ever." But the word "is" is not there. You're gonna have to supply that in your English translation. Okay, so Jehovah's Witnesses they change that around because they change a lot of things in their Bible. You know, they've been doing that for seventy years. I mean, if you you pick up an app in your Play Store, right? And you got the Jehovah's Witness uh, translation. They still playing the same games. They call Jesus a God, not the God, but a God, and you know, uh, God is your throne instead of uh, having the Father addressing Jesus with special definiteness. Though, how they ask is, Oh God, actually the Father called Jesus God. So what's the problem? If the Father called Jesus God in Hebrews one eight, and then he turns around and calls him also. Okay, all right, Yahweh or Jehovah. What's the issue? There is no issue. Why don't you believe that Jesus is God? And I'm doing this in, in Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, actually, where it says in Matthew chapter, um, you know, ch Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, it says, He shall be called Emmanuel, meaning Jesus, and being interpreted God with us. God with us, okay? There's no, there's no controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. And if you don't like that King James translation, well, Haas, which means he, he went to the store, you know, like whatever. Haas means he is a, is a relative pronoun. Referring back to an antecedent anyway, which is God in the previous verse, verse 15 of chapter 3 of First Timothy. So... If the Father is calling Jesus God in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8, and he definitely is, okay, and he did it in Psalm 45, the Psalm of the Wedding, and there's three different O's there in Psalm 45 in Hebrew, Psalm 44 in the Greek Septuagint. I mean, he says, um, you know, O Mighty One, right, and then O God and O Daughter, it says over there. Not necessarily God, but the, the, the writer. You know, with a ready pen. You know what I mean? And we have to be with a, with a ready mind or with a ready heart to, you know, to reach the witnesses or to defeat Jehovah's Witnesses because Jesus did the both. He reached people, the woman at the well. He wanted to save her. And the Pharisees, Sadducees, and Scribes, the teachers of the law, some of them anyway, he didn't want to reach. Okay? Purposely so. I mean, he reached Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night. That's the genitive of time. You know, Nicodemus was scared, so he talked to Jesus by night, so no one could see him. Well, Jesus saved him, okay? You see that Nicodemus is one, you know, is, you know, he took the, the, the body of Jesus, actually, to bury, bury it in a, in a um, new tomb. And from there, Jesus was risen from the dead, Matthew chapter 28, verse 6, Mark chapter 16, verse 6, Luke chapter 24, verse 6, and John chapter 20, verse 9. So we see that um, Hebrews 1.8 has two nominative constructions. There are two candidates. There are two candidates for the subject of the sentence. Okay. Thranos and Theos. Or Thronos or Theos. I don't care how you pronounce the, the O there. Omicron. Nowadays called Omicron. Okay. Yes, there are two candidates. It's just like the presidential election. You had two candidates. You had Joe Biden... 2020 and Donald Trump <laughs> okay yeah that disgrace of a candidate okay all right and so um okay one of them won out okay no matter what Trump says okay Biden will be sworn in on January God willing January uh, 20th uh, 2021 at 12 o'clock in the afternoon okay and so uh, it really doesn't matter what Trump says I mean he could call himself you know the winner it doesn't really matter so it really doesn't matter what Jehovah's Witnesses say about themselves they could call themselves Christians but it doesn't mean that they are okay just because 
I call myself the president of the Philippines, it doesn't mean I am. I could say, I'm the president of the Philippines. Am I the president of the Philippines? No. Okay? So they can call themselves Christians all they want to. You know, Mark from Missouri and Tony from Florida and Deborah from Texas. And she was a wacko. You know, she called me one time and I've been blessed ever since because she hasn't called me again. What a strange Jehovah's Witness. I'll tell you, that there's so many Jehovah's Witnesses that I've spoken to throughout the years in this ministry that are really different. And you have to be on your toes. You have to be on guard. You have to really watch. And uh, you have to know your Bible. And... You know, you have to know the constructions of these things. And that's where this ministry, ministry comes into play. This ministry teaches you the Hebrew and Greek, um, you know, Old and New Testaments. And um, we're going to have the upper hand when we speak to these witnesses that, that are really not well educated at all. I don't care if you don't know Hebrew or Greek. You don't need to know Hebrew and Greek. But if you're denying the Lord at all and you're calling him a creature like you, Okay, you better know something of Greek or you're just not going to be respected. You don't need to know Hebrew and Greek, but if you're saying that Jesus is an angel and Jesus is a creature and Jesus was made and created, well, you better know your stuff. And if you don't, we're going to expose you as the frost that you are, basically. And that goes out to the witnesses. So, um, you know, this, uh, you know, Tony from Florida asked me in one debate and campaign, well, Angela, what are the nouns there in Hebrews, you know, 1-8? They got a whole bunch of nouns there, okay? Huion, okay, that's, you know, the Greek word huios is the son, but that's an accusative case. That's a noun, okay? Dranos is a noun, okay? Theos is a noun, okay? Hrabdas is a noun. Kingdom is a noun, okay? I mean, you know, Su, that's a noun, okay? So you have, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, personal pronouns. Those are nouns, okay? So, um... That's not really the end all be all. It was a noun, <laughs> you know. What is the proper translation for that text? Okay, now Jehovah's Witnesses say, Well, God is your throne, taking away what the Father said to Jesus. In a Jehovah's Witness Bible, you're not going to have the Father addressing or talking to Jesus, telling him that he's God with special definiteness. You're not going to have it in their Bible because they changed the Bible. Now, Mark from Missouri likes to say, well, Angelo, you changed the Bible. I didn't make a translation of the Bible yet. You know, I didn't make a translation of the Bible yet. Jehovah's Witnesses um, did a translation of the Bible in 1950. Okay? With absolutely no scholarship, no knowledge of Hebrew, no knowledge of Greek, and they're making a Bible. Okay? The original languages of the Bible are Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Those are the original languages of the Bible. Now, if you want to translate that into Tagalog, well, you're going to look at the Greek and, you know, you're going to, you're going to, Osebuano, or whatever the case may be, you're going to, you're going to transfer, you're going to actually translate the Greek into the Philippine language, or whatever the case may be. Jehovah's Witnesses were brought to court, okay, and they failed in several occasions in knowing uh, Hebrew or Greek. So they were not qualified translators of the Bible, okay? They were frauds. They were imposters, actually, imposters. Not to use a phrase found in the book entitled The American Muhammad, where um, Albert, Alvin uh, Smith actually looked at the life of Joseph Smith and actually entitled his book The American Muhammad because he had patterns of his hero, Muhammad, of Islam. You understand what I'm saying? He had an assassin. Muhammad had an assassin, right? And on and on it goes. The copycatting of, of, of uh, you know, the founder of Islam, um, you know, by Joseph Smith is absolutely a parallel and incredible. But getting back to this, so um, basically, this is, I just wanted to uh, point out that um, there's a difference between special definiteness and special force. Special definiteness is when you use the um, the nominative um, article, whether it be um, he or ha in biblical Greek. It would be, you know, um, uh, e and o in, in, in modern Greek, but I'm not talking about that. And then um, you translate it all, because that's what it means for special, you know, definiteness. So, um, 
it, that's not a special symbol. There, there is no special symbol for O in that in that sense. You know, like O God, meaning showing special definiteness, like the Father did to uh, Jesus. There is no special symbol for that. So the nominative article has to be used. Okay. Now, if you want to say O with special force, well, that's a special symbol for that, an inflectional particle. But there is no, you know, stark symbol or symbol for, you know, special uh, definiteness anywhere in, in, biblical, uh, in biblical Greek, okay? And so you have to use uh, the nominative article, and that's going to influence the spelling of the noun. It's going to put it into the nominative, and you're going to see hatheas. Well, hatheas, the majority of the times that it's found in the Greek New Testament, okay, uh, is acting like uh, the subject of the sentence. For God so loved the world, you know, hatheas. It's not vocative there is in a nominative case construction so i just wanted to add that you know i looked at this uh, video and um you know i wish um i could have explained myself better in these early videos in my channel you know angelo kiki and i and i guess sometimes i did but when i look at it um you know this is it's, it's kind of weak but you know as the saying goes you know um you know you you get better at it while you know when you after practicing, after uh, reading the Greek and and seeing how constructions work and how um, you know um, how nouns work and how uh, verbs uh, work, and definitely God the Father called Jesus, okay, God here in Hebrews chapter one verse eight, and then He calls Him um, Lord, uh, which is a quotation okay from psalm uh, 102 around verse 25 in that psalm the tetragrammaton is found nine times jehovah is found nine times in that psalm so god the father not only calls jesus god his son god in verse 8 but in uh verse 10 um he calls him jehovah so what else you want the father calls jesus god and then he calls jesus jehovah uh, jehovah also Jehovah's Witnesses, and this is the last thing I mentioned, Jehovah's Witnesses, they like to complain about, you know, Jesus having a God. I actually silenced uh, Mark from Missouri once and forever. And, um, and, you know, he used to like to say a lot that Jesus has a God, okay? But to him, that means that Jesus was created uh, by the Father. There is no verse in the Bible that says that Jesus was created, okay, all right, uh, by anyone, okay? Don't give me Acts chapter 2 verse 36 because I can make you who you are. And as a matter of fact, in that book, in um, Acts chapter 10, um, you know, it, it, it said that the Father anointed uh, Jesus, okay, to be Christ. So that takes care of, you know, he made him Christ. It says in, you know, chapter 10 of Praxis Apostle and the Acts of Apostles that he anointed uh, his servant Jesus, you understand? And then, you know, in Philippians chapter 2, actually, um, in Philippians chapter 2, he actually um, gives, is going to give him the, the, the title uh, which belongs to him of Yahweh at the, at the end. Because it was his originally, he emptied himself of the glory of that name. And uh, uh, rightly so, uh, the Father has to give him that name, okay, back. Right, and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Yahweh, Jesus is Jehovah, to the glory of God the Father. And that's a quotation from Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. And actually, see uh, verse uh, 22 and verse 24. So, um, basically, that's my really um, uh, comment of, of, of this video. Um, that there is a special, that there is a difference between special force and special definiteness and special definite definiteness is being used by god the father if he was you know actually speaking in greek but, but it, at least the writer was using special definiteness and the article has to be used the nominative article has to be used so that will influence the spelling of the upcoming noun after the article and so how they ask looks like the subject of the sentence but it is not the subject of the sentence we all know that the word throne is the subject of the sentence okay and so that's it with that. Uh, this is Angelo Quinones giving the glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. Take care, guys. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.
<laughs> now don't forget to um to check out my new channel um uh angelo kiki that's k-y-k-y just like the spelling you see on this channel and riza r-i-z-a quinones that's my new channel and an old channel i have i have an old channel oh not really it's, it's kind of a couple of years old we Angelo Rucci Quinones, but you, you, you only have to type in Angelo then space R U C C I R U C C I. That's all you have to type in. Uh, incidentally, I want to say before I sign off that um, how did I silence Mark from Missouri? I kind of forgot to tell you guys. Well, you know, how does Jesus have a God? Well, he's the servant of God, he's the son of God, but he's also a servant. Okay, all right. Verses 27 and verse 30 of um, Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostle says that he's um, a servant. Also look at Isaiah, I believe Isaiah 53 verse 11 calls him the righteous servant. Also he became, you know, he, taken up, he took upon himself an additional nature and he became Dulu. Uh, he became, um, you know, he... Um, taking the form of a dulu of a slave of a servant okay that's a participle um labon i believe they're taking and also see zechariah chapter 3 verse 8 where it says my servant the branch okay my servant the branch so um god calls him his servant and so that's how jesus has a god not because he's a creature not because God made him, no, because he serves God, okay? We have a God to finish. We have a God, meaning you and me, regular mortals, if you will, regular people, um, in these four different ways. We have a God by election, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, by creation, Genesis 1, 1, by salvation and you see the shun you know it rhymes um you know matthew chapter 1 verse um 21 and adoption romans chapter 8 okay jesus fits none of those um items on the list he didn't have a god by salvation he didn't need any salvation we do he did did not and doesn't and he wasn't adopted he wasn't created and he wasn't elected what fits on the list if you just keep on going down the list well you know we're the servants of god and jesus is the servant of god and that's the only way that he has a god and um it's because he came to serve okay so anyway um so take care guys um that's how to answer the my god um uh verse okay in revelation chapter 3 you see um tuteu mu there um my god also in hebrews 1 9 as i was gonna sneeze <laughs> no and then you see also um uh they try to bring up uh, micah chapter 5 verse 4 and just uh bring up uh the word will in the english and the word uh uh, he will uh, uh, stand or he will arise um, in uh, a verse 3 of the Greek Septuagint chapter chapter 5 okay uh, okay uh, future tense form of the sigma sigma is actually uh, proving you that's a, that's in a future tense all right guys take care now bye bye now my daughter Anna Devane there. She got into the series. <laughs> Take care.